What's up everybody, Cameron, Audi C7 owners, back with a DIY video. So tonight, uh, I'm actually gonna be doing a lot of work to the car today, tomorrow, over the course of the weekend. Likely gonna be spitting, splitting up this video into multiple videos. Um, gonna be doing uh, oil change, nothing crazy there. We're we'll doing valve cover gasket change because I've got some significant leakage going on. I don't know if you can see it down in there, but there's a good amount of leakage there. There's a good amount of leakage back there. There's a good amount of leakage on this side over here. So gonna get that under control. Uh, also gonna be doing a spark plug change. Now keep in mind, you don't have to remove spark plugs to do your valve cover gaskets, but I'm gonna do it all. Um, haven't decided if I'm gonna have both of those in one video, if I'm gonna split them up, so to be determined. But gonna be using uh, some wonderful BKR9EIX spark plugs uh, as per IE's uh, recommendation for dual pulley tune. Uh, and you might say, hey Cameron, you are stage two single pulley. Oh yeah, you're right. That's something else I'm doing this weekend. Finally going dual pulley with the Velocity AP 205 millimeter oversized crank pulley. Gonna be replacing the 187 millimeter pulley that we have on there. So that bad boy is going on there. We're throwing these in there to prep for the dual pulley tune. And gonna gap those 0.026. In case you're curious, that's once again from Integrated Engineering's uh, recommendation. On top of that, I am going to, let me see if I can find it through the midst of all my garbage act here. I've got some uh, BG EPR floating around here. Ah, here we go. Not the EPR, but I got the intake valve cleaner stuff here. And this is what the dealership uses to uh, basically soak on your piston heads overnight to try and break up carbon that might be up in your piston rings. I don't know if it's gonna really make a difference, but uh, I got it while the spark plugs are out. I'm gonna try and get those out tonight and let it soak overnight so that I can change the oil and see if that makes any difference. I know some people said, yeah, I had compression issues. I did this and my compression went back up to normal. I don't know if I'm having compression issues. I don't think I am. Uh, but still though, my car's got 120 something thousand miles on it. I figure can't hurt to try it. So gonna do that. So my goal tonight is get everything apart, get that stuff soaking on the piston heads and then come back tomorrow morning, drain all the oil, suction all that stuff out, put the new spark plugs in, put the new valve cover gaskets on, get the crank pulley installed, do all that stuff because next Sunday, about a week and a day from now, a week and two days, I'm going to Eurofest Raleigh uh, for their indoor show in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I'm gonna be a booth car for Merc Racing. Okay, so the first thing I've done is just basic stuff for prepping to work in the engine bay on this stuff. I got the intake system out, so I have a clear shot at everything over here. Uh, you can see it's nice and open. The passenger side is the easiest to do. One thing I noticed once I get everything out of the way and I get back here, um, I'm gonna try and get a better light real quick for you guys. Stand by. Okay, so um, coming back here, I've got everything out of the way. I started looking and if you look here, there's a good amount of oil that's seeped here. Um, and I'm concerned because that makes me feel like that is my upper timing chain cover leaking oil, which would not be fun. That is not an easy fix. At least that's not the lower chain, but to get back here and replace the gas gel on that and do everything is just, you can do it with the engine in from what I've been told. Um, I just don't know that if that's within my skill set. So uh, I'm gonna keep a lookout because I'm trying to see if it looks like it could have possibly come here, but it doesn't look like there's any oil come from the top of the valve cover gasket that would have gotten back there. So um, I'm fairly certain that's my upper timing chain cover, unfortunately. But if you look down here, um, you can definitely see build up there. And then if you look in here, you can see how much oil is leaking from my uh, timing or from my valve cover gasket on the passenger side. So that is a significant thing. Um, the one thing we're gonna do here before we really open up and start tearing stuff apart and before we start removing this stuff over here is I'm going to get the compressed air. I'm gonna blow everything out as best I can. After that, I'm gonna vacuum everything as best I can. And I'm also gonna use some brake cleaner to spray down and try and clean up all of the residual uh, oil that has already leaked out. That way it's nice and clean. When I start pulling stuff off, I have a very minimal chance of getting any kind of debris into the valve covers, like, you know, underneath it into the actual engine. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Okay, so I've just cleaned off this side really well. I did what I could over there without removing the coolant uh, reservoir. I'm gonna work on that some more before I start that side, but uh, I'll show you the difference over here. And so you can see, it's a lot cleaner underneath here. 
get really in there so you can see. And then I cleaned off the top of the engine here so that I can monitor and see how much oil I'm losing, if I am losing it from the timing chain cover here. So um, hopefully that's just maybe spilled oil or something from a previous job. Let's keep our fingers crossed and hope that I don't have to deal with that. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start to do some of the work here, start pulling this stuff off. What I'm probably gonna do is go ahead and go over there and I'm gonna remove this and I'll show you guys how to do this. I'll probably show you guys how to do this whole job on this side because it is the most difficult side. If you can do this side, then this side is a walk in the park here. So I'm gonna work on that side. All right, so my plan, I'm hoping that I can just get this loosened and pulled up and out of the way so I don't have to drain it out and completely remove it. So I'm gonna disconnect these two uh, return lines here and then I'm gonna undo this. This is a T25 screw. And keep in mind on the bottom, there's a, a hose that connects to the very underneath side of this. So you don't wanna yank it up like crazy and pull that out because you'll have a bad time. And then you also have your coolant level sensor right here. Uh, so if you do have to remove it, you're gonna have to remove this and then drain this out with some kind of sump pump, some kind of hand pump, and then disconnect it from the hose. So first, we're just gonna try and loosen it and see how much play we can get with it. So we're gonna make sure we set this screw somewhere safe and don't forget about it. Be easy with these lines as you pull them off. You don't wanna break any of these, that would be bad. And so you have these and those can just kind of hang there. You can push them out of the way as you need. I'm gonna actually hook them behind my Merc Racing Divorce Reservoir and that keeps them out of the way. And so now this should be able to lift up Okay, so I got this disconnected and got it out of the way. I wanna show you guys. So I didn't disconnect the actual uh, level sensor. That is still connected on the side under here. What I did was I siphoned everything out. And I got about uh, that much out of there. And what I did was I got it pulled up and out of the way so I could access the hose. And there's this, this little clamp that keeps that connected to right here. And so I got to pull it up, use my pick and just pull this off. Now be careful, this comes off. So when you pull it off, make sure your hands are underneath it so you don't drop it down into the abyss. Because if you can't get that pipe secure back on here, that's not gonna be fun. You can see there's coolant here. When you pull it off, you're gonna have coolant go down there. It's just nature of doing something like this. I got coolant everywhere. It's sprayed over here when I flicked a hose. So I'm gonna have to clean this up one more time with a little bit of brake cleaner, which is no big deal. I'm probably gonna siphon just a little bit more uh, coolant out of there. So if I hit it, it doesn't accidentally spray, especially when this uh, valve cover gas is open. I don't wanna get coolant in there on accident. So I'm going to siphon that out a little bit more and then shove a paper towel in there. So I'm gonna do that and get to working on removing uh, all the good stuff before we get to the valve cover. Okay, so the next step, uh, whether you're doing valve cover gaskets or just spark plugs or even just changing your coil packs is to uh, remove your actual coil pack wiring harness. So one, two, three plugs. You got one, two screws here. Um, the one thing that people would mess up in the Volkswagen Audi world are the plugs. Okay, the, these things, they think that these holes here to put something in and pry it out and then they end up breaking it. Same thing with this, uh, they, they mess this up. And these are actually really, really simple. So um, one thing I need to do, I need to undo these first and then I'll show you how to do that. So stand by, getting ahead of myself a little bit. Okay, so these screws are T20s. Once we get these out, we can disconnect the actual harnesses from the coil packs and move this out of the way. Now, once again, don't drop these and lose these. Okay, so the trick to almost every single Volkswagen Audi wiring harness, if it if it's, doesn't have an obvious pull tab, what you're gonna do is you're gonna push forward on the actual, like you're gonna take this, like right here, we're gonna push up this way. You're gonna push up, and then you're just gonna press it down and then it should pull off after that. That's it. Now on these, another one, or for these in particular, you can get this here, then you can just lift this tab up and get it off of there. That's what you can do for these, but it's helpful to know the correct way to use and remove Volkswagen Audi plugs. Super, super simple once you know what you're doing. All right, the final step we're gonna do with this wiring harness is we're going to detach it from the valve cover, or from the valve cover, which is just clamped right here. And then we're gonna remove this 
uh, sensor here. This is one of our, one of our um, basically intake temperature sensors for the uh, supercharger. The way this one works is a different little tab. You have this little gray thing. You pull it lightly, then you push on it, and it will release. So you have that, and then now this should just pop off of the valve cover gasket like that. And that's gonna give us just a little bit of extra wiggle room to have this and to be able to move this around as we start to get to stuff, okay? Okay, so the next part is removing the coil packs. And if you haven't removed these or messed with them in a long time, they can get stuck in there. And you can try and get some hands on there and pull them out. I've already kind of gotten this one started. Uh, you can use zip ties, get a zip tie underneath here and here and lock them together. You can use that to get leverage. Uh, there is a specific tool to remove these that makes it really easy. Um, like I said, I've already got this one started. So let me see if I can't use my hands. Yep, there we go, create some suction. Let's take a look at it. You can see a little bit of oil right there. Um, not too bad though, so that's good. We're gonna set this out of the way. But a way that I use to do this, and you just be really gently, or really gentle, is I use a long wrench. This one's a 16 millimeter. And I'm gonna find a spot that I can get underneath the coil pack and then just move the wiring harness out of the way. I'm just gonna pry it out and get it started. And then I use my hands from there. That makes it really, 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 really simple to do. So we've got those three coil packs out now. So from here, if you are just doing your valve cover gasket, you can skip ahead and I should have the time flash up here to the time where it shows us how to remove the valve cover gasket. Uh, but if you're doing your spark plugs, then this is where you would remove your spark plugs, which we're gonna do next. All right, so to remove your spark plugs, you need a spark plug uh, socket. This is a 5 8 socket. It comes with an extension. I'm gonna add an extra one just so I can clear the, I think it's a, pretty sure that's an AC line right there, something, whatever that is, it doesn't move very much. So I want something that I could clear all the way. Uh, make sure you use hand tools, no uh, impact or anything like that. And we're gonna go ahead and loosen these and pull each of them out. I won't show you how to do that. I think you know how to do that if you're at this point. So I'm gonna go and knock that out and we'll take a look at the spark plugs after. Okay, so let's go over the spark plugs. Uh, I got all spark plugs and coil packs out. Um, this is driver side bank over here. This is passenger side bank over here. So three, two, one, six, five, four. Um, all of my uh, lower cylinders here, I guess you would say, uh, let's say four, five, one, and two. The spark plugs look great. Their um, wear is exactly what it should look like. There's no buildup on any of them. Let me get a focus here. They've all got that kind of just slight yellow brownish on the side electrode and the side electrode looks good. Uh, there is a little buildup in the threads here from oil seepage and that's from my valve cover gasket being shot. So I've got all that in there. There's no oil fouling on here, which is really surprising to me considering how much oil I'm burning, but that might just lend weight to the fact that I might be burning it out of my exhaust valve stem seals, but that's a other video for another day. Um, three and six, have a little bit of ash fouling buildup on those. And you can kind of see it there. That's that kind of like flaky stuff building up. Let me show you three. And that could be potentially from additives, but for my car and with the help of Facebook group, um, I remembered this. My intercooler cores on here, if you guys remember from my old video, started to leak and I caught it really fast. So it didn't leak a ton of coolant into the engine, but that's why I have ash fouling on six and three, because when your intercoolers leak, typically the signs you're gonna see is that your car is gonna get misfires in cylinders three and cylinder six, if both sides are leaking, and it's gonna go you know, into limbo, potentially flash an EPC light. So it makes total sense that I've got a little bit of ash fouling on cylinders three and cylinder six from the short amount of time that my intercooler cores were leaking. So. Uh, Otherwise, everything looks good there. Uh, pulling everything out here um, on number five, I accidentally twisted the coil pack as it came out and I ripped my boot there. So I have to replace that. I should have some replacements laying around here somewhere, but if not, I know some guys in the local club will have a replacement for me. So that's just a small thing, just the boot got torn. I'm gonna have to replace that. But uh, otherwise, I'm gonna move on with doing the rest of my work today. I'm um, doing a whole lot of stuff, but if you're just watching for the spark plugs, you can skip ahead now to whatever time I'm gonna show somewhere in this video. And that's gonna be the reassembly of the spark plugs. We are about to start removing everything off of this valve cover to get the valve cover uh, 
off, so we're gonna start to unscrew stuff and whatnot. But first, uh, a couple things. One, this is a vent hose that goes to your uh, PCV. And what happens is this comes in and there's one on the other side and they meet in the middle to hit this like Y valve that connects to the back of your PCV. It is extremely brittle. And if you wreck or move it around too much, it's gonna snap, which you can see, I've got a piece of rubber hose here, but you can see my hose back here. Well, obviously you can see, it's not that. I obviously broke it here. Let me walk you over here. You can see that it is broken. Uh, I mean, as soon as I move that valve cover uh, on the passenger side, which I did that side first, just cause it's easier. I wanna get a little bit of practice in. It immediately cracked. Uh, so Alex Kite and I myself both had the same uh, idea. As soon as it cracked, I started looking for some hose and I got some uh, rubber hose that literally fits on there perfectly. And I'm hoping that I just made a quick disconnect that I can push that onto. Uh, we'll see how that works. He's running it and apparently it's been working okay for him, but Shout out to Chris Pinetta, I think it's C Pinetta 97 on Instagram, who sent me a video of this rather random dude doing a trick. And I'm gonna show you guys that we're gonna get this thing off of here using a snipped piece of hose clamp. Some of you may have seen this trick, others not, but uh, as you can tell, I cut down a piece of hose clamp, kept the curve, and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do to hopefully use this and remove that uh, vent tube without breaking it. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to take this thing and we're gonna try and get one of the corners up underneath this part of the uh, hose clamp or the vent hose. Now, there are pieces that come down and kind of wrap around here and those have broken off a long time ago. So we're gonna take this, we're gonna push it up underneath here, try and get the whole thing started and then we're gonna use needle nose pliers. We're gonna grab this lip and grab this and try and shove it up underneath there. Once it's up underneath there, it should break most of the seal uh, for about half of it where we can use some channel locks and pry it off. So that's the idea behind it. So we're gonna give it a go and see what happens. So I got the right side in there. It's a little tricky to hold this on here and push it up. So I got, I got the left side, that's easier to start there because it's a harder side to get. And then, and what I'm doing is I'm pulling down on this while I'm trying to push this up. And yeah, I'm gonna probably scratch my valve cover gasket a little bit, but I'm not terribly worried about that. You definitely don't wanna break anything. Some angled pliers would be really good right here, but I don't have those. So I've got it pretty good and in there. So I'm gonna take these and I'm going to try and wiggle this thing off. It seems to wanna to come off, it's loose. It's definitely moving more than it has. Hopefully we don't break anything here. Okay, so I got it off using that trick. It took me about 15 minutes total. Um, let me find the piece here. The trick is once you get this up underneath there and you got it all the way underneath, you can see how mauled that thing is. Um, I used a pair of channel locks and I'll link to the video that I found out how to do this. And I grabbed and basically I kept my finger on this piece pushing up and I just grabbed this and wiggled it and while I'm holding on this, wiggled this and tried to push it backwards and it popped right off. It, it, once you figure out the trick, it's actually really simple. So uh, definitely do this, don't break that hose. All right, so we're at the point where we're gonna start pulling off the last few things before we actually pull off the valve cover gasket. Uh, we've already blown out and vacuumed and cleaned as best we could, but we still have some stuff here. Uh, you've got this uh, line right here. I'm pretty sure it's a fuel line and we need to we just pop out these clips and then we're going to remove these two screws. There's two torque screws to remove this little plastic cover here, which if you've replaced your supercharger, you know what I'm talking about. That's another area that stuff can get trapped in. So before I open this up, I want to make sure I can get all the dirt possible out. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that, vacuum it. And then after that, I think it's time to go ahead and pull off the valve cover gasket or correction, the valve cover. <laughs> These screws are T25, in case you were curious. Once again, be careful not to lose these in the engine bay.
Very handy to have one of these magnets to help collect screws and not let them drop down. Okay, so we're gonna pop this line off and pull this cover out, set it aside. I like to keep my screws with the covers that I've removed so I don't get confused as to where they go. Okay, so uh, it looks relatively clean, but I'm still gonna get my vacuum and pull as much stuff out of there as I can. It's time to start removing uh, the screws that hold on the valve cover. So you got one, two, three, four on top, you got four on bottom, and then you've got one, two, three across the, uh, actually you got four across the middle as well. So it goes one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then four on the bottom. The most tricky one is the bottom right corner, and I'll show you how I get to that one. This side is more difficult than the passenger side because we have a lot more obstructions. We've got this line here, we've got this hard line that is pretty much impossible to move, and then some other random stuff over here, but it's not too hard. You just take your time and don't damage anything. Oop, make sure we get the right one. These are T30s. And real quick, before I get through this, these screws are, they have these kind of gaskets inside the valve cover that are designed to keep them in there, but some of them will come out. So be very careful not to lose any of these. This last bottom right corner uh, bolt is the trickiest just cause it comes, like the path to it is right up with the body line here. And so it's just a little tricky to get into. Now I've got a really short stubby, uh, like really small socket that I can get in there and loosen it with. But I've also come up with this contraption, two quarter inch ex uh, extensions with a quarter inch socket to hold my uh, triple arm, sorry, my uh, 30 Torx. I'm gonna use this. I'm probably gonna get in the way of you guys being able to see it, but you get the idea of what's going on here. I'm just creating a crazy stupid long extension to try and get in here. Get my light there. All right, I'm in. And it's good. Then what I can do, I take that off and I've got my little hand adapter here and I can do this all by hand way out here. And that made it really, really, really easy. And this will also allow me to get it back in really, really easy. This came in really handy on the other side because on the other side, there's more obstructions for this corner bolt. I taped it up as well so I wouldn't drop it because these things have a tendency to come out. So that is completely off. So now it's time to remove the valve cover. I'm not gonna wear my mic while I do this cause I wanna be able to pull this off and walk away with it. But uh, once again, do one last check, get anything that can move and get in the way, out of the way as best as possible. Make sure there's really nothing that can slip and fall down into the engine. Um, I've got our PCV hose disconnected. When you pull this off, it, it's gonna probably be nice and sealed on there. Like right now I can't pull it off. So I'm gonna get something to pry it up from here to break the seal and then it should come apart pretty easily. That's what happened on the other side. And as you pull it off, just take your time, go slow. Don't break anything. Don't drop any of the bolts and take your time and you should be good. All I did was I got my screwdriver in there and just pried real gently and it completely popped apart. Right, so it's completely off. I think the best way to get this out is to go this way with it. So I'm gonna maneuver my wiring harness around the bottom of it so it's not in the way anymore. Trying to do my best to make sure I don't break that stupid pipe because I've already got to deal with it on the other side. All right, there we go. And it is off. I'm going to take this to the table, readjust the camera, and I'll meet you guys over there. 
All right, it's time to prep our valve cover by removing the old valve cover gasket and installing the new one. So um, all you need is a pick of some kind, and these are potentially gonna be really brittle. They might break apart into little pieces. So right now we're just gonna focus on pulling out the old gasket and then seeing what we need to clean up. Okay, so we got all of the old gasket off. What you wanna do as soon as you're done with that is start going through and looking to see if there's any little pieces that may have gotten stuck in there. Um, you're gonna find some re residual oil and that's totally fine in there. You don't need to worry about getting every little bit of oil out from in on top there. I'm just kind of running my pick along to see if it grabs any plastic that I missed, any seal. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here with my vacuum and I'm gonna vacuum out the, all the channels just to be safe. And then we can work on putting the new uh, valve cover gasket on. Okay, so now it's time to put on the new valve cover gasket. When you buy these, there is a right and left side according to the dealership. Uh, so make sure you get them to tell you which one is which. On the part number, what I was told is that when the last few numbers there, when it ends in an odd number, that's the driver side. If it ends in an even number, that's the passenger side. But when you get these, they can only go on one way. So lay it out and which the way you want, there's a thin piece that's that's long here on the bottom, that goes down. You want the wide flat piece on top. That's what needs to mate with your engine. So light it up here, see if it makes sense. This one does not, so we're gonna flip it around. And there we go. It only goes on one way. And the good thing is these hold on to themselves. So all these little round things get pressed around these fittings that are in the valve cover gasket. So you wanna press them down in there and get them around that. You might have to push up from the bottom, like I'm doing here, you push in on the screw and it'll push it through here and that's what holds your valve cover gasket in, which makes it really nice when you're putting this back onto the car because it won't fall out, hopefully. So I'm gonna take some time and do this, get this back in and we'll be right back. The new gasket is on. I've got, oops, sorry about that. I've got everything pressed on there. I went around and pressed up on each screw to push that fitting all the way through because that goes and that helps hold that gasket in place while we maneuver it back onto the engine. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go get this back onto the engine and get it in place. I almost forgot to tell you about this. Before we put the valve cover on with the new gasket, we need to clean the surface of the engine where the old valve cover was. You need to make sure there's no residue there, no oil sitting there. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take some brake clean and just a blue towel, and I'm gonna spray the towel and wipe it down. I'm gonna try my best to wipe everything away from the motor. So I'm gonna do this, then we're gonna reassess and see what is left on the surface of the engine where this gasket is going to mate to it. Don't use anything that shreds apart really easily then gets into the motor. That would not be good because you'll be fishing all that stuff out. I don't have my microphone clipped to my chest here so I'm just letting you know it's time to put the valve cover back on. Uh, luckily none of my screws actually came out, which is nice. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of tapping them all down to make sure they're as low as possible. I do my best as I put this on to not let them fall because there's a lot of stuff to kind of traverse. So just take your time here, go very slow, make sure you don't break anything, make sure you don't let the seal fall out of place, and make sure you don't lose any screws. Okay, so the valve cover is in place. That was actually pretty simple. You just kind of have to maneuver it around the things. Um, now we're just going to 
sync these down without torquing them because we got to torque in a certain sequence uh, starting from the inside out I believe and we'll consult the e-manual that I've got uh, to tell us exactly what to do and I'll put that information in the video but that was actually pretty simple going in there so I'm gonna go ahead and get these down and we'll check out the torque settings and get this knocked out so one thing that has helped me a lot recently, you guys, is I got a full e-manual catalog on doing work for the C7. Uh, this is from uh, the guys over at eManuals, and I'll have a link in the description that you can follow to go get one for your car as well. And this has all the technical data that you can get for doing these jobs on your car. This is just a huge help. So like right now, I'm over here on the cylinder head section, and this is going to allow me to go down and look at you know, it tells me how to replace or remove the valve cover gaskets, like what all the parts are, what they're called, every little thing. And it's just a huge help. It's really cool because when I load it up in the PDF, I can go over here and it's clickable. So the table of contents, I could click on it, it took me over here to the cylinder head and then here, cylinder head cover, removing and installing. That is, cylinder head cover is your valve cover. So if I click that, it brings me down to this section. And what's great is it tells me the sequence for removing, or even more important, installing and torquing the actual valve covers. So it's, it's really great. It tells me the torque specs. So it's nine Newton meters and it tells me the direction. So you start on the inside and we start one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And that's really important that you do it in that order. And I'll have this picture hopefully blown up and on the video for you to see before we get into actually doing it. But yeah, uh, this is I think $30 for the whole catalog. And if you're doing this stuff at home, this is a huge, huge help. So check out the link in the description. Okay, so nine Newton meters and we gotta do it in the direction specified. And once again, I'm gonna point it on the valve cover gasket. Okay, these are all hand tightened to you know, stopping point. So now I'm gonna torque them and remember the sequence is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Tuking, or torquing to nine Newton meters, which is, I don't know. I don't know how many foot pounds, but I'm gonna do that. So let's get it on here. We have our valve cover fully secured now. So the last step to completing this process, uh, if you're doing spark plug is to put the spark plugs in. Uh, make sure whatever spark plugs you're using, you're getting them gapped correctly. I'm going to a dual pulley ratio with an integrated engineering tune. So I'm doing the NGK BKR 9EIX spark plugs gapped to 0 0.026. So I'm gonna go get and do that and I'm gonna put those in. And when you put them in, uh, check my e-manual on these. Torque setting, uh, yeah, can't talk today. Torque settings for your spark plugs are 22 foot pounds. And uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get working on that. The most precise way to get a correct gap on your spark plugs, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little puck here that I just showed you, I'm gonna back it out a little bit so we can play around with this again. By the way, this is a spark plug that I don't particularly care about, it's just one I got laying around. But the most precise way is to spend about 15, 16 bucks. You can get both of these online. I got this at uh, Advanced Auto for like seven bucks, but this little contraption I got on eBay for, I don't know, $7, something like that, seven to $10. Um, and th with these two things, you're gonna be able to get the most precise gap on your spark plug possible. So what this is, this is a series of metal strips that are different uh, thicknesses and widths, and it tells you on there what it is. So you can see on this one, it says, let me get the camera focused. Okay, there we go. So you can see it says 0 0.026, which is the exact gap we need. That means this piece of metal is that exact width. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this contraption here and we're going to screw our spark plug into it. We're gonna screw it all the way down until it stops, okay? So now we've got this piece that we start screwing down and we just slowly turn it and it will close the gap between the uh, electrode there and you know what I'm saying. Anyways, it's gonna close that gap slowly and then what we can do is as we start to close it, we put this little piece of metal in and we try and get it to where the piece of metal has got no gap, okay? So we keep doing this, we fill the gap, there's still plenty of space between there. So we're gonna do this until we get it to where there's barely any space between your electrode, well, the upper and lower electrodes there. 
And what I would suggest to you is go really slow, just tiny turns, tiny turns, and check it every single time so you don't go too far. Because if you go too far, you're gonna have to take this thing out and back it out with that puck again, or some other way. So right there, make sure it's going in nice and flush with the metal there, make sure it's level so you're not at an angle. Almost there. There we go. There's barely any space. There's no space between the upper lecture and lower lecture, so that is a .026 gap. That Before we install the plugs, we're gonna put just a little dab of dielectric grease on here to prevent any kind of corrosion. Um, actually, I put it on the wrong spot there. Not quite that clean. We just wanna put it on the ceramic part and rub it around there. Just a really thin coating. Doesn't take much at all. All right, we've got our spark plugs coated. We're gonna put them into the spark plug socket and just thread them on by hand. We'll get them hand tight and then we'll go through and torque them down. Remember, 22 foot pounds. Don't over torque these. If you strip that down there, you're gonna have a very, very bad day. All right, 22 foot pounds on each of these. Now we are going to replace our coil packs. And this is super simple. Just make sure you align them right. There's these circles, they have a circle and then there's like a little divot on each side and that's to match up with the boot here. Okay, so you don't wanna do it sideways because it could tear the boot. So we're just gonna go in here, make sure the connector is pointing down, line it up. Once they're lined up, you just push in. Part of my child screaming in the background, he's playing with my wife. Don't know what they're doing. All right, coil packs are in. Now we need to connect the wiring harness and that's really simple. You just line up the plugs and then push up and they will click in. Once you've got those clicked in, we need to replace the two screws here. All right, we got the wiring harness connected. Now it's time to reconnect everything else that we have disconnected. So that means putting this harness, clip it back onto the valve cover there. Make sure that's nice and secure. Make sure everything you have touched is nice and secure. So all that's put back together. Now we just need to reassemble the coolant reservoir, which should be very self-explanatory. Remember you've got that pin to connect the hose to the bottom of this. Uh, and then we will fill it with oil and get it started. All right guys, so that concludes our valve cover gasket and spark plug DIY video. Uh, it's really not that bad. Time consuming, yes, uh, sometimes a little tedious, but my biggest piece of advice is to just take your time. Uh, take your time, don't rush. Use that hose clamp trick to coax the, uh, what's it called, the vent hoses from your PCB off and, and don't break those. Because if you break them, yeah, you can probably use some tape. Uh, you can use some good like gaffer's tape or even electrical tape to seal that up. I used a rubber hose and that worked just fine so far. Haven't had any issues. Um, but yeah, take your time. You'll be good to go. Uh, let's see here. The one thing I've noticed, you if you're following the channel, you know that I've got some oil consumption issues and I'm burning oil. Um, I've uh, also in the same weekend replaced my crank pulley and I've been just dogging on the car and I am not seeing any blue clouds of smoke at all. So I think the valve cover gasket replacement fixed my burning oil. I mean, I'm sure I'm still burning oil somewhere, but I'm not seeing giant blue clouds when I'm going into high RPMs and downshifting and all the things that would normally result in blue clouds of smoke coming out of my exhaust. So I'm gonna keep an eye on it. And if that changes, of course, there'll be another video on it, but I am really, really happy with it so far. Leave your comments and your questions below and I'll see you guys on the next video.